Oke, okay. salam sejahtera kepada semua hadirin. Peringatan mesra untuk semua hadirin dalam talian ini merupakan bengkel ulang kaji SPM Ibus yang kedua matematik tambahan anjuran Riam Tech bersama Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah Miri. A very good afternoon to all guests. A fair reminder to all, this event is the eBoost SPM Revision Part 2 Workshop for additional mathematics organized by Realm Tech. Collaboration with Miri District Education Office. Untuk makluman, pelancaran bengkel ulang kaji SPM eBoost Matematik tambahan akan bermula dalam masa dua minit lagi. Okay, for your information, this event will start in two minutes. Alright, if you have any friends, okay, who wish to join us quickly, okay, ask them. Alright, invite them, text them, call them. Okay, uh, ask them to join us faster. Okay, right, quickly. Join us, alright? Or if you have any friends telling you that they cannot join us in Zoom or they face any difficulty, right? Welcome to join us in YouTube channel, alright? YouTube channel. If you don't know where to watch, okay, just tell them. Type R I A M T E C, okay, at the YouTube channel there, right? Then. They should be able to know uh, where is the, uh, the, the link or the place to watch this um, with us. Okay, they should be able to watch the live, okay, with us. All right, okay. So, first of all, let's give us a little bit of time, okay. Wait for our friends to join us. Okay, maybe they are still rushing. Okay, they are still rushing coming back from lunch. All right, so let's watch a video first. Okay.
Greetings to Selamat Tengah Hari, Selamat Pertang dan Salam Sejahtera kepada yang dihormati Dr. Ma Chi Nang, penceramah kita pada hari ini. Pengetua-pengetua sekolah, guru-guru dan pelajar sekalian. I am Auntie Lina here, okay, share with you a little bit about myself. I am from Student Recruitment and Admission Development Department from Briam Institute of Miri, okay. It's my pleasure to be the moderator of the day, okay. Terima kasih atas penyataan, okay, pada hadirin ke bengkel ulang kaji SPM eBoost Matematik Tambahan Anjuran Riamtek bersama Pejabat Pendidikan Daerah Miri. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you here. We appreciate you taking time off your busy schedules, very, very busy, okay, but you join us today. You will be awarded a certificate of participation for today's workshop. Kindly stay with us until the end, but you can start to uh, register, okay? You can start to fill in your details, okay? You can find the Google link, okay, for the e-certificate in the chat box, okay? In the chat box, you can start to fill in because we have special highlights, okay, for today's workshop. According to the link, okay, according to the e-certificate database there, okay, we will copy out all the names and we will put it in the lucky draw session later. So we will draw from the e-certificates, um, the, the names that you have, key in that you have submitted to us. So it's very important, right? So make sure you quickly go, in, uh, go to the chat box there, right? And click on the link and you can start to fill in simple details, right? Right, then it serves, actually serves two purpose. One, you will, you will be awarded e-certificate and another one, you will be um, you have you stand a chance, all right. You stand a chance to win um, two voucher. Okay, one is further study at Realtech voucher uh, worth about two hundred ringgit. Okay, and another one you'll be getting twenty ringgit of hot cross bun um, voucher. Okay, right. So yeah. That is the special announcement, right? Before I would like to pass the floor to our wonderful speaker of the day, right? Sebelum memulakan bengkel ulang kaji SPM eBoost Additional Mathematics pada hari ini, okay? To kick off the program, please allow me to introduce our today's speaker by reading his profile. Dr. Ma Chi Nang, he is teaching additional mathematics subjects, okay, in SM St. Michael for 20, 12 years already, okay, all the way. Hi, Dr. Ma is from Sabah. Thanks to the technology, we are able to have this revision class with Dr. Ma. Thank you, right? He has seven years as Guru Chemelang in additional mathematics. Wow, okay. Proven abilities, whereas students achieve a 100% passing rate from 2018 until 2020, as well as the subject breakpoint average GPMP of additional mathematics in his school were 2.56 in 2018, 2.04 in 2019, and 3.02 in 2020. Wow, we are very um, lucky to have Dr. Ma today. Okay, we can attend his 
classes, even though we are not from SM St. Michael, right? Thank you to Dr. Ma for, uh, for joining us, okay? To take a time off from his busy schedule, okay? Right, so, wow, okay. Now we have come to the pinnacle uh, period, okay? That is, we would like to pass the floor to Dr. Ma, right? So before the session starts, if the student, if you have any questions during the session, please share your question in the chat box, okay? At any time, all your questions, so your question will be read out from time to time, or maybe from time to time, Dr. Ma will go there and have a look, lah, all right? But if, uh, but don't worry, right? If your question um, is not, read out by us, okay? But don't worry, after that, after the workshop, we're going to have this Q&A session, right? So by that time, we will unmute you, okay? All right, we will unmute you. Then you can start and ask question, all right? Okay, so I think I should step down a bit. Okay, I should step down already. I should pass the time to... Dr. Ma. Let's welcome Dr. Ma by clicking on the reaction. Over to you, Dr. Ma. Sorry for a little bit delay. It's okay. Uh, thank you, moderator. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone who is joining our eBoos part two, either in Zoom and also YouTube Live. And how are you today? Uh, I'm very happy and first of all, I want to say thank you again to the organizer for inviting me for the second time for the sharing to all of you. So before we start, please allow me to share my screen. Am I sharing my screen? Yes. Okay. okay. So before you start, I would like to do some revision, not revision. I want to uh, give, uh, pinpoint a bit the things that we want to focus today. Uh, as I mentioned in the first slot, uh, the, the, all the topics of additional mathematics is actually from the five learning area, which is algebra, geometry, calculus, trigonometry, and statistic. And if according to the data here from SPM 2016 until SPM 2020, I, I count the average for every topic. So which means the value you can see at the back here, 8 point something, 13 point something, 6 point something is actually the average of the total marks of paper one and paper two that I get based on the past five years SPM. So we can, so from here, we can have some idea on how important are those topics in SPM? So of course we do not know. Uh, we do not know how will be KSSM, but I do believe that because the topic is almost the same. So the webpage between the topic shouldn't be too different in KSSM. And as you can see here, actually every topic they contribute almost the same marks to your uh, final marks later on. So which means learning additional mathematics, mastering topic by topic is very important. Okay, so uh, how many days left to SPN? We still have five weeks. So within these five weeks, what can you do to improve your grade now? So I do believe that every one of you already uh, receiving your result of your trial SPN. So how good is that? So maybe some people performing well, some people not so. Okay, it's okay. So whether you are passed or fail, most importantly now, you have to plan your strategy, how you're supposed to use your five weeks wisely before you face your paper. Okay, now I will write, I would like to share with you what have what 
what I what have I planned for my students? So I divide my student into three phases. One, the first one, student with the marks less than 40, which means those who are still fail. Phase two, uh, those who uh, pass from range from 40% until 69%. Phase three are those who had already get at least 70, 70 marks, which means at least A minus and above. So you are, if you are those who are still fail, or you are those who are still get less than 30 marks, less than 20 marks, or even single digit, what you're supposed to do within these five weeks. So as I mentioned uh, just now, it's important for you to master topic by topic because we know every topic, it, it will contribute certain portion of marks to your final marks at all, and it will determine your final grade also. So uh, this is only my suggestions. So as I say, I only suggest this to my students. So if you feel if you find this is useful, please you you may you may use it at your own for your own revisions. If you feel that there are certain things that it doesn't it, uh, it doesn't suitable for you, you can always modify it. So I divide into different stages. Uh, stages stage one, stage two, and stage three. So every stage it might take around, uh, about one week. So for those who get, especially for those who get less than 20 marks or single digit, I would encourage them to start with index number and also linear law. Because these two chapters can consider uh, the, most, the most easy chapter if compared to the other chapter. Easy to learn, easy to score, and easy to predict what kind of question might be asked in SPM. So I could write down the marks at the side here. This 10 mark and the 13 mark is the average mark that I collect from the past five years SPN. Of course, the marks will not be exactly the same as the one I wrote down here. It's just uh, more or less the same. So we just use it as a reference. Okay, so that will almost, we try to use about one week to finish this stage one to try to master these two topics. And after that, I will encourage the student for the stage two, you can go for solution of triangle or linear programming. That one, after that is coordinate geometry. So coordinate geometry is one of the important chapter also. And some students, they don't really, don't really like it. But this chapter also will be useful in your normal mathematics. Why? Because in normal mathematics, you learn about straight line. You learn about gradient, point, coordinate uh, to find the equation of straight line. So if you know this chapter, you should able to answer in your mathematics also. Okay, so you can see the marks is 10 marks and 15.4. So try to spend another one week for these two chapters. So of course, two chapters within one week, I'm not sure whether it is enough for you or not. So I just say, try to spend one week. If not, maybe you can spend slightly more than one week. But of course, not every chapter you need to, you, you need to, you need to do back. For example, if you already know index number, then you can save time for the other chapter, right? So after that, the third week, you enter stage three, I will advise you to go for vector and also circular measures. So circular measures is another chapter that you will you, you have learned in your mathematics also. And the question, honestly, is not too, too different if compared to mathemat normal mathematics. The difference here is in additional mathematics, you have different unit. We learn about the, the unit of the angle in radian. Normal mathematics in degree. So maybe you want to ask, is it a must for us to apply those formula, the formula that you learn in additional mathematics, uh, additional mathematics to, to use in additional mathematics paper? So my answer is, it's not a must. Of course, you can use the new formula. But if you feel that you are more comfortable to use the math, the normal mathematics and the normal way you learn in mathematics to solve the question, yes, you can do that. It's just that you have to answer according to the questions. For example, if the question asks for angle in radian, uh, you have to convert your answer back to radian, right? If finding area, finding uh, arc length, finding perimeter, that one is up to you, all right? 
And uh, you can see the average mark here is 12.2. And if you look at vector, vector is 14.6. I put the vector here, why? Because vector for me, if you, if you notice the question, especially the question, paper two question, uh, the pattern of the question is more or less the same. So first question usually ask for vector based on the diagram given. Second question, usually they will give you a new vector with unknown. Then the question gives you a certain condition and ask for the unknown. So I do believe after you practice a few questions, let, let you get used to the type of the question, then you should able to answer the question already if routine questions. Okay, of course, we are not talking about the KBAT question, KBAT question 9 ticket. So this one, you will spend another one week. Okay, maybe some of you want to ask. So if we, if we, if we just learn uh, revise on six topics uh, within these three weeks, uh, not, not six topics, so uh, six topics within three weeks, it's too slow because we only have five weeks. Okay, of course, this one, my suggestion is for those who still fail or for those who get single digit, uh, blast blast or 20 something. So we can try to count actually. Uh, if you look at the marks I wrote at the side, 10 marks, 10 plus 18, 13 plus 10 plus 15.4 plus 14.6 plus 12.2, the total marks you can obtain from this six topic more or less 75.2. So 75.2 marks, if you convert to uh, 100%, you will get more or less 42%. 42%. So 42% is already considered past in the school level, right? So can you, can, you, can you believe only with these six topics, you already passed? So again, those who still fail, those who get single digit, those who get plus plus, please ask yourself, is it possible for you to learn this six topic or maybe five topic just to make you pass? Okay, so school level, passing mark is 40. But SPM, do you think the passing mark is the same as school level? Okay, it's very difficult to say. Why? Because SPM is according to the graph. So if, for example, this year, let's say like, this year, if uh, the equation is very easy, everyone can score very good result. Of course, we will expect the graph will be nice circuit, like, so some circuit to pass. But if the equation is difficult, then everyone is not performing very good, then we will expect the graph to run circuit. Like, so which means the, the passing mark will be lower a bit for the student to pass. So it depends on the performance of the student from the whole Malaysia. But of course, uh, we always try to follow the school level. If you manage to pass in school, it shouldn't be a problem for you to pass in SPM. Not only pass, maybe you can get D and C and so on, right? Okay, so again, for those who already passed, then what you're supposed to focus? Of course, you, you look at the, phase, the chapter in the phase one first. So if all okay already, we move into phase two. So phase two, I encourage my student to master first probability distributions. So this is a chapter that I know some students, they are not really, they don't really like about this chapter. But as I met, as I share already in our first uh, sharing uh, in the e-boost e part one, this chapter, I cannot say very easy, but it's quite easy for you to score marks if you, know, if you understand and you know how to answer the questions. Okay, then after that, I will, I will encourage my student to go for trigonometric function. So this is another uh, chapter that the student don't really like it. Why? Because of a lot of identities. I ask many students, they don't really like. Then I ask them, hey, why, why, you don't, why, how you, why, why you don't like this chapter? What is so difficult with this chapter? Most of them will answer me, oh, it's difficult for them to prove. Most of most, the first answer I, I, I received from the student the is is difficult for them to prove. Actually, proving question is only two to three marks. So there are more kind of questions from this chapter we can understand and, and master easily. For example, the graph, how to draw the graph because the graph usually come out in paper two and the marks is much higher if compared to the proven questions. How to solve, how to find the, the angle and how to use the information even to find certain information. Later, I will do some sharing on this chapter. And for those, for those who are having some difficulty on this chapter, maybe you can uh, put, some, uh, put more attention during, the uh, during my sharing later on. Okay, so after you after you okay already with these two topics, maybe you can go for progressions, integrations, 
differentiations and permutation and combinations. And I know we still we only left five weeks, so we don't have time to go through topic by topic, uh, week by week. Because, uh, if we if we if you follow my planning now, the maximum topic you can cover is only ten. So that's why I say you can mo always modify yourself if you already pass and you already master most of the topic I list down, then you can skip and then you, you go through again the other topic that you need. Okay, so this one is for phase two. So if you count the marks I list down here, 16 plus 18, 13.8 uh, plus 11 plus 14.2 plus 11.4 plus 3, you get 69.4, right? So if I counted these two and then I convert to percentage again, I get 80. So my planning here is actually to push my student to uh, at least grade A minus or A. Okay, even though I write down 80%, uh, in reality, of course, lah, we can't expect the student, even after they learn, they will get full mark. No, they will not. They Sometimes it's difficult for them to get because of careless mistake or because sometimes the question got k but or the question is non-routine, then they cannot answer. We, we have to consider that also. But from what you can see here, by, by mastering six topic, you had the chance to pass. By mastering 12 topic, you have the chance to get A already. So now let us move to phase three. So phase three are for those who already uh, get at least 70 and above. And of course, stage one, you need to master all topic. Those who go for A, A plus, every topic you need to know. Okay, you cannot allow yourself to, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't know certain topic. And after that, when you end, when you're okay already, you go for the, the second stage. Second stage and the third stage is more for your timing. So timing is very important. So the first part here, my advice for my student is one mark to 1.5 minutes. So which means is the if the question is 10 minutes, then try to spend not more than 15 minutes. If the if the if the question is eight marks, try to spend not more than 12 minutes. If the question is four marks, try and not spend more than six minutes. So this is how I advise my student to control their timing because that is very important. Otherwise, they cannot finish the whole thing uh, within the time given. So usually for the A plus student here, this last part is the technique for me to use to push my student to A plus. So the timing I give to them here is one mark to one minute. Of, beside the question I let them do, of course, the time is very important. 10 marks, 10 minutes. 8 marks, 8 minutes, 5 marks, 5 minutes. I need to make sure they can really follow this. Why? Because if they can follow, they will have extra time during SPM for them to either double check all their answers or if they feel that they want to do extra questions, maybe some of you want to ask because if you look at your paper 1 and paper 2, section B and C, you can choose, right? You can choose. But does it mean you must choose? Not necessary. If you are fast enough, and you already double check everything and you feel that there is a need for you to do extra questions, you can do it, no problem. Why? Because some people, they can hardly see their mistake even though they double check. So maybe some question, they, they are not that confident. So that's why they need to do uh, the question as the backup. Who knows to make mistake in the original question they did, then the backup question might contribute the marks to, uh, to, the, to that sections. As you know, section B in paper one, they only choose two questions, right? So if you make if you answer three, they will choose the two high the highest two, the highest two to count in your exam. The lowest one in section B, they will not count. Okay, but of course, if you don't have the speed, try not to do that. That one is only for those who already got the speed and you 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 want to uh, avoid the risk of careless mistake. Okay, so I go through this one very fast with you. And I want to uh, help you to revise again on the decimal. So this one I already mentioned during the first the uh, the first part of eBoost. So I go through it very fast with you again. O value is at least four significant figures. So always remember all your calculations and all your answers that you get. As long as your answer is in decimal, always make sure your answer is at least four significant figures, not less, but can be more. So always remember that any chapter. Some chapter, they really stick to this rule. Less, cannot. Even the zero at the back also, they count. Some chapter, three. Some chapter, not so. 
So to avoid confusion, all the chapter will just follow. Lah. But for certain some some value, uh, not for not following this rule. For example, angle in degree. Angle in degree we always follow at least two decimal places. But of course we can give more, but we don't give less. Okay, one decimal places is not accepted. And one more thing you have to be careful also is the money. The money must be exactly two decimal places. Uh, this is the one that you cannot give more and you cannot give less. It must be exactly two decimal places if you get the answer in decimal. Okay, the reason here is uh, you cannot give more because the smallest, the smallest money is one cent, right? You cannot get 0 0.1 cent. Calculation, yes, but in reality, we don't have, right? So always remember these three. Four significant figures, generally four significant figures. Angle in degree is at least two decimal places, but angle in radian is different. Angle in radian, we follow the first one, at least four significant figures. And money, at least two decimal places. Okay? So this, these are the things that you need to know before we start our lesson. So if we go back to the list here, our first, first e -boost, I have went through with all of you already the chapter linear law and coordinate geometry, vector and probability distribution, if not mistaken, and system of equation. Oh, one more thing I want to emphasize. I did not put in some topic here, for example, function, quadratic function, system of equation, indices, third and logarithm. It doesn't mean that they are not important. They are also important. So that's why I say, if you feel that there is a need, you can always exchange the topic here. Then you try to count the marks and see whether you can get, uh, if you study this topic, whether you can get the grade that you want or not. All right. So today I want to start with the topic that uh, many people not really like it, which is trigonometric functions. Okay, trigonometric function, the main reason people don't like is because of a lot of identity you need to know, right? But uh, for example, the first thing that we need to know is trigonometric ratio. But of course, this one is not difficult. Sine is O over H. Cos is A over H. Tangent is O over A. And then we know also tangent is sine over cos. And then we learn the new trigonometric function also. Cosec is equal to one over sine. Sec, sec is actually second. Uh, cos second and second. Second is one over cos. And then cotangent is one over tangent. Cotangent also gives us cos over sine. So these are uh, these these are not given in formula list. So you have to find a way to memorize it, and it will be always uh, needed in answering the SPM question. So how to answer it? Uh, how to memorize it? Uh, I usually I advise my student. If cosec, you look at the third letter. So third letter is S, right? So it's one over S, one over sine. So second, third letter is C. So C, one over C, one over cos. Again, third letter is T. So T, tangent. So one over T, one over tangent. So this is one way for me to ask my student to memorize. So I believe that every teacher and every student, they, you have your own way to memorize, right? Just make sure you remember all this. Okay, the next thing that, uh, this is the one that uh, people might be not really, uh, how to say, They're, this is the thing that make people afraid of this chapter. We call it trigonometry identity. So we have three main identity we need to know. The first one, we call it basic identity or we call it Pythagorean identity. Why the name is Pythagorean? Because all the identity here, we derive from Pythagoras theorem. But today, I'm going to show you how to derive it. So sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to one. Tangent square theta plus one equals to second square theta. One plus cot square theta equals to cos square theta. So this thing uh, look very complicated, but don't worry because all of this will be given in your SPN formula list, right? So the second one is compound angle identity. So compound angle identity, I believe that you all ever see already. Sine A plus B, cos A plus B, Tension A plus B. No need to memorize. All are given. So the last one is double angle identity. Okay, double angle identity, also the same. Sine 2 theta, tangent 2 theta, cos 2 theta. 
cos 2 theta got different a bit because you got three different identity cos square theta minus sine square theta two cos square theta minus one one minus two sine square theta again O can be obtained from formula list so now we just have to know how to use it so now I'm, I'm going to discuss with you some of the common question that usually come out in SPM so we just have to make uh, before we uh, practice on those k bar questions, we have to make sure that we can answer all those routine questions first. So let us have a look on this question. Solve the equations sine 2x plus cos x equals to 0 for 0 until 360 degree. So usually the first thing when you read this question, it, you should look at the, in this question is the double angle, right? So the first thing you check is the double angle because when the double angle and the single angle appear together, you cannot solve it. So that's why you know the first thing you need to do is use the identity to change the double angle. And we know that sine 2x, sine 2x, we can write it as 2 sine x cos x. So this one, you can easily get it from the formula list. So that is our first step we change to 2 sine x cos x plus cos x equals to 0. Okay, after we change the identity, you can see the double angle no more there. And we can see also the cos x and the cos x, cos x here are the same. So please avoid doing this because I noticed some students until this step, what they do is some people, they will move the cos to the other side. So what they get is 2 sine x cos x equals to negative cos x. Okay, then after that, what they do, they will both side divided by cos x. And then they will cancel off everything. And then they will get 2 sine x is equals to negative 1. And you're still able to get the answer from here. But the answer is only from the sine x. So I can tell you in SPM, Please, you avoid doing this. We try not to cancel any of the trigonometry function here. Why? Because once you cancel it, part of your answer will be gone. Okay? Once you cancel, even though your final answer is still correct, the maximum marks you can get is only two marks. And this question is four. So what we're supposed to do with the cos x, we don't eliminate. We factorize. So if you factorize it, you will get cos x bracket 2x, two, 2 sine x plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, I repeat, you always remember when, when, the question, when the question asks you to solve, the first step, always changing identity. Second step, factorize. Okay, these two, these two steps is very important. Why? Because both of these steps will give you marks. Change identity correctly, you will get one mark. Factorize correctly, you will get one mark. So it's very easy for you to get the first two marks, actually. Okay, it's just that you need to understand how to apply the identity given. Okay, after this step, then it's a time for us to try to solve it already. So how to solve this one? We break the cos x and 2 sine x plus 1. Make it becomes cos x equals to 0 and 2 sine x plus 1 equals to 0. Then you will get cos x equals to 0 and sine x equals to negative 1 over 2. Uh, this one is from 2 sine x plus 1 equals to 0 from here. I move the 2 to the other side. Right. And until this step, I will advise, I usually advise my student, and uh, this is not uh, this is not a must for you to do, but you can you can see how I explain to my student. I always ask them to draw this. So draw this, you get four quadrant A S T C. So I hope you still remember this A S T C. A is T C A stand for all positive, sine positive, tangent positive, and cos positive. So which means the, the other two will be negative. How to remember this? Usually I, I tell my student all signs teachers cute. Just remember that all signs teachers cute. Okay. Uh, of course, that is not the main point. The main point here is how we're supposed to use it. So what we do is we find the reference angle. So how to find the reference angle? We press calculator. The first one you can see is cos x equals to zero. So you press calculator, inverse cos zero. So you can press 
shift cost zero and you will get 90, right? Then you write down 90 there. So this 90 is what we call reference angle. Why? This 90 is not necessarily your final answer. This 90 is the reference angle that you should refer to find out all the other possible angle. Okay, before we decide uh, which, which quadrant we're supposed to take our answer, we have to know first how we're supposed to find all the value here. Second quadrant, we use 180 minus. 180 minus the reference angle, which is 90 also. Third quadrant, we use 180 plus the reference angle, which is 270. Last quadrant, we use 360 minus the reference angle, which is 270. Uh, this is the cases for cos x equals to zero. Okay, now let us look at sine x. So for sine x equals to negative one over two, my advice is when you press the calculator, do not press including the negative. You just press inverse sine one over two only. So you press inverse sine one over, if you press together with the negative, I'm afraid some of the students might confuse. So that's why you just press inverse sine one over two, and I believe you will get 30. Again, this 30, we call it our reference angle. So based on our reference angle, we need to identify which angle we need to take as our final answer. But before that, we try to find all the angles first. So 180 minus 30, 150. 180 plus 30, 210. 360 minus 30, 330. So with that, we get all the angle uh, for all four quadrants already. But if you ask me, is, this, is it a must for us to do that? Of course, this is not. This is for, for understanding only. It's not necessary for you to do it. Okay, how to identify our answer? Very simple. We look at the zero first. So now we need to know it's a time for us to use ASTC. So if positive, we choose the positive part. Cost positive, if cost positive, we refer to A and C, right? If sine positive, we refer to A and S. If tangent positive, it's A and T. But if neutral, Neutral, we are going to take all. So A, S, T, C, we take all. Then we know already. Our answer, two of our answer is 90 and 270. So now let us refer to the second one. Sine negative. So if sine negative, we are not going to refer to A and S. We are going to refer to T and C. Because T and C is tangent positive, cos positive. Sine would be negative. So our answer we need to take is 210 and 330. So when you write your answer, please write it as 90, 210, 270, and 330. Okay, where to get the third mark? Uh, here, I need to explain a little bit how to get the third marks here. So you can see I wrote down, uh, I wrote down something above here. Actually, when you get the four answer correctly, you will get two marks already. But the third mark is actually from here. If you manage to get any of the answer from cos x equals to zero and any of the answer from sine x equals to negative one over two. I, I go right down here, for example, 90 and 210. 90 is the answer from the first part. 210 is the answer from the second part, right? Or 19 and 330. Or 210 and 270. Or 270 and 330. As long as your answer got these two value, any of the two pay, any any pair of the number here appear, you will get your third mark. So of course we don't we don't write this one in your in your answer. Lah. I just telling you this is the third mark. So if you write your answer correctly, truth you will have two marks already here. The third mark is given to any pair that appear from your answers. Okay, so which means if you give extra uh, if you give, if you write down your answer, but your answer got some some wrong, maybe you still have the chance to get the third mark because of the possible pair that you can write it correctly. All right, I hope I'm clear with the marking here. And this, I want to emphasize one thing. Uh, do you see the reason why I ask my student to write down all the angle, uh, all the angle before they decide what to write as their answers? Because once you write down all the angles, your answer will be in the angle, will be one, will be inside the angle you write, right? So even though your final answer is wrong, you will always, 
you will always able to get the third mark because you already write down the, 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 the answer from the first part and the second part. Okay, but again, it's not a must for you to show my drawing, uh, the drawing I show you here. It's just to help you to understand, understand better which angle you're supposed to take. So you have to check sign positive, sign negative, cause positive, cause negative, or neutral. Okay, so I hope I'm clear here. So this is the example of the equation of solving equation. I usually got four marks. Okay, I repeat. First mark, identity. Second mark, factorize. Third mark and fourth mark is your answer. But third mark will be given once your final answer is not correct, but you have the uh, one answer from the first part and one answer from the second part. So some question you do not have, you do not have two parts like now. So that's why that kind of question usually is three marks. Okay, so this kind of question usually is three to four marks. Okay, now, uh, beside solving question, I would like to share with you another type of question usually asked in SPM, which is this. So it is given that cos alpha equals to t with the condition the, the alpha is from 0 until 90. So from the starting again, the question is telling you that the angle is acute angle, which is at the first quadrant. Right, and the information given here, cos alpha is equals to t. Right, express in terms of t, sine 180 plus alpha. Then the second question is second to alpha. So many students, when they look at this kind of question, and then the number oh, got unknown. Many people they were afraid, and then they will skip. But now I tell you, so this kind of question is quite common in SPM, so we had to make sure we know how to do it. So this, I will advise you, this kind of question, try to draw the diagram out. Okay, draw a diagram out. We try to draw the triangle. So we need to know where is the alpha. Since the alpha is at the first quadrant, then we draw the triangle like this, and this is our alpha. I label here wrongly, it's supposed to be alpha. Okay, not theta, alpha. First and first, uh, first quadrant. Uh, if second quadrant, then we have to draw at the second quadrant. Third quadrant, we draw at the th third quadrant. Okay, but uh, after this one first quadrant, and now the most important thing we need to know how to level it. Okay, how to understand this t? We know that t is actually t over. We need to label O A H right, O A and H opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. So the t we understand it as t over 1, correct? t over 1. And then cos, we also know cos alpha is equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, we know that our t is a, our 1 is h. So with that, we label it in our diagram. The, the a is t and our h is 1. And our O, uh, this one we have to find by using Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem telling us one square minus t square. So that will give us square root of one minus t square. All right. So with, with the O A H that we found, then it's the time for us to find our answer already. So let us look at the first one. Sine 180 plus alpha. So many people, when they look at this, some students, they will think of Compound angle identity, sine A plus B. Yes, this is one of the way that you can use to solve these questions. So if you want to apply compound angle identity, then you need to know the formula, sine, uh, sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Uh, if you want to apply. Lah. So how we supposed to apply it? So as you can see here, if you want to apply this identity, we need to know what is this sine A cos B. We need to know cos A sine B. A here represent 180, right? And the B is alpha. So we write down sine 180 cos alpha plus cos 180 sine alpha. Okay, so cos alpha we know already is T, right? Sine 180 and cos 180, we can find by using calculator. So sine alpha, that one, we need to find from our diagram. 
So if you look at the diagram, sine is sine theta, I write here, sine alpha is O over H, right? So O is square root 1 minus T square, H is 1. So you write down, sine alpha is square root 1 minus T square. So from here, we get the answer already. How to get the answer? If you press the calculator, sine 180, it gives you 0, right? So this one, you don't need to count already. The whole thing here, it will become 0. So 180 here, if you press calculator, you will get negative 1. So this part is negative 1. And the sine alpha is the one that we get, which is square root of 1 minus t squared. So with this, we know that the answer is negative square root 1 minus t squared. Uh, this is how we do it by using compound angle identity. But I can tell all of you, actually this question no need to do in this way because this question, in this method, like so complicated. And if you look at this identity, some people, they might feel um, phobia with those identity. So what, you will just have to understand what is the meaning of 180 plus, 180 plus alpha. Try to imagine alpha is the acute angle. If you plus 180, what will happen? If you plus 180, the angle, it will extend until here, right? Which is the third quadrant. And this will give you alpha plus 180. So when the angle reach the third quadrant, then still remember the ASTC just now, ASTC. So third quadrant is T, T positive, sine will be negative. So that's why if we know that sine alpha is positive square root one minus T square, sine 180 plus alpha definitely is negative square root one minus T square. Okay, third and fourth quadrant will be negative, but the outcome will be the same as the original sine alpha with the negative. Okay, now let us look at the second question. Second question is second. So like I, what I shared us now, this one we have to change identity, but the identity is not given, but the third letter is C. So C means one over C, one over cos. So one over cos two alpha is our first step. Okay, then after that, we have to refer to the identity. And this one, we have no choice, okay? This one, I have to emphasize cos 2 alpha is different than 2 cos alpha. I write here, two, 2 cos 2 alpha is not the same as 2 cos alpha. You cannot just times 2, because I noticed some students, uh, cos, cos, what they do is cos alpha is T, right? So two, cos 2 alpha, they go in times 2 becomes 2t. No, we don't do that. Okay, you cannot bring out the 2 also. So what we need to do is we refer to the identity, which is 2 cos square theta minus 1. Okay, 2 cos square theta minus 1. So cos square theta here, we understand it as cos theta square. So the t, or oh, alpha, sorry, alpha. So the t, we can substitute it inside, then we will get, uh, 1 over 2t squared minus 1. So with that, we get the answer, right? Okay, so this is one way for us to do it. Some people, maybe you, are, you want to ask, uh, cos 2 theta, we have three different identity. 2 cos squared theta minus 1 is one of them. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta is also one of them. And actually, you got one more, which is uh, the first one, cos squared theta minus sine square theta. How are we supposed to know which one to choose? Uh, this is a question. How we know? Actually, I can tell you, uh, it doesn't matter. Any identity you choose here, you will always get the answer. Okay, let's say I don't choose the first one. I choose the second one. If I choose the second one, so what I get here will be 1 over 1 minus 2 sine square alpha, right? And we know that sine alpha gives us square root of 1 minus t squared. Uh, this one will be a little bit complicated. 1 minus 2 uh, bracket square and inside is square root 1 minus t squared. So square root and square hilang already. So we get 1 minus 2, 1 minus t squared. So you notice if you go and open the bracket and then you count it, this one, it will be, it will become uh, let me count. It will become negative 1 plus t squared, plus 2t squared, which is the same as the one, 1 over 2t squared minus 1. 
So same thing will be happen if you use the cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, so there is no there is no issue which one to choose. You just have to know how to use it. All right. Now for the marks, the first question. One mark is given once you show the sine alpha equals to square root one minus t squared. Second mark is given when you when you get the answer negative square root one minus t squared. So it's important for you to show this sine alpha equals to square root one minus t squared. Okay, now second question. Once you change the identity, one mark, answer one mark. Okay, one more thing that I want to advise here because some people Maybe from the starting again, sine alpha, uh, sine alpha equals to square root one minus t square. Also, they cannot get it correct. So if this is a case, everything will be wrong, right? So I will I will always advise the student to draw the diagram out. So which means you draw the triangle, you label what is your O, what is your A, and what is your H. With the correct labeling the one mark might be given if everything is wrong. So I repeat again, in SPM, the one mark might be given to your diagram, of course, with the correct labeling. All right, so I hope this one is clear. So I already show you two different kinds of question. The first one is how to solve. The second one is how to use the information given and how to, how to express in terms of certain unknown. So now I want to show you uh, another another example here. So the third kind of question is proving question. So this is the one that many students con uh, afraid of. And again, don't be too afraid of this kind of question, even though you but -but -but cannot do one, two to three marks only. And the first one is actually easy to get. So let us look at this question. Prove that tangent A over two is equal to one minus cos A over sine A. So this question, when you just look at it, memang scary. Why? Because you got half angle. So if you got half angle, what you supposed to do here? A over two is half angle. The A here is the original angle. So the, the relation between them is A is double of A over two, right? So when the question involves half angle, maybe we should consider the double angle identity. So I do not know, but most of the time, half angle, we apply double angle identity. So the first thing here, we look at this one minus cos A over sine A first. So we try to do something with the cos A and the sine A. So we look at the cos A. So like I said just now, A is double of, A is double of A over two, right? So we try to refer to the double angle identity, cos two theta equals to one minus two sine square theta. And now we want to change the angle here, the two theta and the theta here. Like I say, A is double of A over two. What if I change the two theta becomes A and the theta becomes A over two? So I can write it as cos A is equal to one minus two sine square A over two. Right, the relation still the same. They are, the, the A is double, a over two, we are still applying double angle identity. All right, now we can replace this inside. So for sine A, also the same, sine will refer to sine two theta equals to two sine theta cos theta. So we change again, become sine A equals to two sine A over two cos A over two. Now we substitute inside, so it becomes one minus one minus two sine square a over two over two sine a over two cos a over two. So we simplify the thing above. So a one minus one, gone, no more, right? Negative, negative, it become positive. So you will get positive two sine square a over two, two sine a over two cos a over two. So we can simplify the sine and the sine here and the two and the two here cancel off no more. So what left is sine A over two over cos A over two. So sine over cos give us tangent. So with that, we, we prove already. Uh, this is equals to tangent A over two. So usually proving question, we need to prove from either left-hand side to right-hand side or right-hand side to left-hand side. So my advice is usually uh, we always start from the complicated part because if you start from the e easy part, 
it's very difficult for us to reach the complicated outcome. So it's better for us to start from complicated part, then we simplify it to get the answer in the, in the simplest form. All right. So this kind of question, uh, like I said, once you change the identity, you will get marked. So you can see our first step, we change identity, right? So changing identity, you will get one mark. Then after that, the answer, two marks already. So proving question, like I said, two to three marks only. So once you manage to change your identity correctly, one mark. So if during the real SPM later on, if you butu -butu have no idea what you're supposed to do, please, you look at the equation properly. You, cho you choose to start from the complicated part and then you try to check the formula list. You see any identity that you can apply. So you apply it. Who knows? You still can get the one mark. You cannot get the answer. It's okay. It's only one mark gone, right? Yang penting, you already get one mark because of changing identity correctly. All right? So solving, finding, proving question. So now I want to talk about graph. So sketching is one of the important part of this topic. So before we sketch, there are something that we need to know. So the, the pattern of the question is A, trigo, uh, the, I write down trigo there, it can be sine, cos, tangent, P, X plus Q. So we need to know all the meanings here. First, if you want to sketch a graph, the first thing we have to check is either sine or cos or tangent because we need to know what is the pattern of the graph. For example, if sine, if sine graph, the graph will be starting from the center and then up and then down and then down and then up. Then you join, right? Uh, this is how your graph for sine. So if cos, it will not start from the center. It will start from the top. Down, down, up, up, correct? Then you draw. So this one is cos. So if tangent, uh, this one... A lot of people, they're afraid of tangent, but tangent actually easy to draw. You just get ready four partition, and the first one and the third one, you draw the asymptote, and the rest all, you put the point. So just make sure your graph pass through the point. Your graph always moving up. Turn, pass through the point, turn, going up again. So here, turn, make sure you pass through the point. Okay, so the basic graph, remember, I repeat again, for sine, we start from the center, up, down, down, up. For cos, we start from the top, down, down, up, up. And tangent, we start from a point, asymptote, point, asymptote, point. Okay, firstly. Secondly, we look at the P. P here stands for cycle. How many cycle here? Then thirdly, A, amplitude. Then Q. Q means either you shifted up or shifted down vertically. Then after we identify all these important things, we look at the range. And we look at the value either is negative or positive sign because if you've got negative sign, the whole graph will be inverted, right? And then modulus. Modulus is, it will make all the negative sign turn to positive. And then the range. The range means we do not, the graph, the equation only want you to draw until certain part, then you have to stop. Okay, so now I will show you one SPN question. Let's see. Sketch the graph for y equals to cos 2x. Uh, this question is easy because you, you don't see much information here. The first thing is cos. So when you want to draw, firstly, we need to know what is the, uh, what is the shape of the graph. If cos, remember, you start from the top, down, down, up, up, then you draw. Right. But this one is 2. The 2 here represents two cycle. So here you need to know, uh, this is the way I advise my student. If two cycle, you, you need how many angle that you, uh, you need, you need to count how many angle you need to draw. So usually one complete cycle is four, uh, four, four point, one, two, three, four, down, down, up, up. That one is for one cycle. So if two cycle, so what I ask my student to count is two times four, then it becomes it. So I will ask them to label 2 pi at the back first. Actually, it's 300, uh, it actually it's 360. Okay, I forgot to change. So this one I suppose to change to 360. We follow the questions. Okay. After that, I need to label 8 partition here. So how to know all the angle here? 360 divided by 8. So with that, you will get all the angle. 
Uh, so here I forgot to change. I suppose to change to angle in degree according to the questions. So sometimes the question one pi. If the question one pi, then we label as two pi at the back. If 360, we label 360 at the back. And how to get all the angle? It depends on how many partition you have. Like this question is eight. So we divide it by eight. Nah? So if 360 divided by eight is 45. So which means every partition here is 45, 90, 135, and so on. Every time you plus 45. Okay, now we follow the pattern of the course. We start from the top. Okay, and then if you check the amplitude, the other one is positive one. So we label one and negative one as amplitude. So we start from the top and every partition, you must have one angle. So you follow the pattern down, down, up, up. So this one is one cycle. So now we go for the second cycle, one down, down, up, up. Then you draw. So from the graph here, you can see two different cycle, right? Hey, two cycle, right? You can count one, two. Okay, so let's say if the question don't want until 360, the question one zero until let's say 270. So which means you, you just have to draw your graph until 270. 270 should be somewhere here. So your graph draw until here, then you stop already. No need to continue to draw. But of course, uh, it is important for you to know how to draw until 360 first. After that, Baru, you decide where you want to stop the graph. Okay? Jangan, some student I noticed, they look at the question, oh, until 270. Then they confuse. At the last angle here, through they label 270. Then they confuse with all the angle that you're supposed to label in front. We always stop the graph at 360. But based on the question, uh, Baru, you decide where you want to stop drawing the graph. But the complete graph always until 360. All right? So this is a simple example and we need to know the marking here. So like this question, you can see we have three marks. Okay, how they give mark in SPN? First mark, they give to your graph. So as long as your graph look like a coarse graph, you are drawing a coarse graph, you will get one mark already. So which means uh, next time in SPN, if you betul -betul have no idea how to draw a graph, but you number eight hey, got coarse, then you draw like a coarse graph there, at least you can get one mark. Right. Okay, the second card, second, second mark they give you for the two cycle. So two cycle they can see from your graph, two cycle there. Right. The third mark they give for your amplitude is one. Okay, how to check the amplitude is one. Uh, this one I want to emphasize for oh, I want to emphasize here. So everyone you have to remember in SPM, uh especially SPM this year, when you want to label amplitude, label properly the one and negative one, and also one more. The dotted line for the maximum line and minimum line, please, you draw it properly. I repeat, the maximum line at the one and negative one for the graph, please, you draw it properly as the dotted line because that will be under the marks for amplitude. Last time, SPM, they are not really emphasized on this part, but now, Nowadays, I'm afraid they will. They are very particular with this. So please make sure you draw the maximum line and the main minimum line for the dot uh, using the dotted line to represent your amplitude. Okay. So I will show uh, one example again here. So sketch the graph y equals to one plus tangent two x. Okay, one plus tangent two x. So one by one we check and you can firstly we can see this one is tangent. So we need to know the graph of the tangent. Okay, we start from the point and we have four partition at right? one, two, three, four. So asymptote, point, asymptote, point. Right. And this one is the normal, normal graph line, normal tangent graph. But this question we got more to consider. First, the tangent. So we label the last angle as to pi. Okay, the question is until pi. Eh? So please don't confuse with the pi first. But we know that we need to use pi to label the angle. Okay, after we look at the tangent, the second thing we check is the, the cycle. Number of cycle is two, right? So like I said just now, one cycle you need four points, two cycle you need eight points. So which means we need to do eight labeling here. So how to know all the angle here? Very simple, the last angle is 
2 pi, right? So 2 divided by 8, I get uh, 1 over 4. So which means 1 over 4, 2 over 4, 3 over 4, 4 over 4, 5 over 4, 6 over 4, 7 over 4, and 8 over 4. 8 over 4 gives us 2 pi. So we change. Lah. So this is how we do all the labeling. And maybe some of you want to ask me, is it a must for us to do all the labeling here? Actually, it's not. Actually, it's not. Based on uh, previous SPN, what I can see is uh, the, the first value, 0, and the last angle you need to label. Uh, for this question, the last angle is pi, la, not 2 pi. But that one later, we talk about it. Okay, so now for tangent graph, uh, for tangent graph, you need to know we start from 0, and uh, you put the point, asymptote, point, asymptote, point, asymptote, point, asymptote, point. So that will give you the graph of two cycles. So if you draw the tangent graph, we check whether it's positive or negative. So you can see in front here is positive, right? It's actually positive one. So we don't really care what is the number because tangent, we don't have maximum. We don't have minimum. Most importantly, positive or negative. So if positive, then it will be the normal shape. The graph is always going up like this. Okay. Then lastly, you got the one. One means the graph will be shifted up by one unit. So some people, they might want to ask, hey, where is this one unit? You can label by your own. So you just label uh, one unit and move the whole thing up. Okay, I repeat. So the graph is moving up by one unit. So if you are not really sure about uh, how the graph moves, you can always draw the, set, the equilibrium line, this, this line, and then you put all the points and then you make sure all your graph will pass through the line. You know why I want to emphasize this? Because I noticed some students, they might make this kind of mistake. They know they have to move up by one unit. So they move up by one unit. And then they move up this line. Then the rest, they forgot. So you have to move up everything, not only the starting. Okay, so that's why uh, it's good also for you to draw a dotted line there to show that everything is moving up, then including all the points and the whole graph going up. So same thing also, if shifted down, minus one, the whole thing going down also. Okay, so with this, we get our graph already, but still not our final answer. Why? Because the question wants us to draw until pi only. So which means we now we need to erase our graph until pi, then stop. Uh, this is our final answer. Lah. Okay, now how they give mark in SPN? Of course, the first mark is given to tangent. As long as your graph looks like tangent, they will give you one mark. So that's why, this is why I say this now. If you have really, really have no idea how to draw, you just have to draw a proper tangent graph, you still can get one mark. All right? So the second mark is given to the two cycle. So two cycle, they will look at the angle. Even though the graph here, it doesn't look like two cycle, like I said just now, but this graph is actually a two cycle graph. It's just that we already erased the second part. One, we want to stop at the pi. Right. If you continue to draw until 2 pi, it will show two cycles of the graph. So the second graph, the second mark here is not the amplitude because this question the other amplitude. I mean, you've got the amplitude, but it doesn't show in your graph. So the, the third mark is given to one unit shifted upward. So your graph go up by one unit. So which means we want to see the point. We want to see the whole thing going up already. One mark. So what does it mean? If you draw the graph correct, and then your cycle correct, but you forgot to, you forgot to move the graph up, you still can get you still can get two marks. Okay, I hope this one is clear. So the uh, the marking for the graph is part by part. They want to they will check two cycle correct or not, amplitude correct or not, whether your graph shifted up or shifted down or not. But minimum, I you can always get at least one mark because you always know how to draw the sine or cos or tangent, right? Unless you totally have no idea how you're supposed to draw those sine, cos, or tangent basic graph. All right? Okay, so usually after, after, after the sketching, paper two question, they will continue to... Oh, here I want to emphasize one thing. If no asymptote, your graph will be... Uh, your, your answer will be, you will be minus by one mark. So the asymptote means the dotted line here the total line, please make sure you draw. Some people, they don't draw. If you don't draw, one mark will be gone. Okay, remember that. Okay, now usually in paper two, they will continue to ask the question. Uh, this one is continue from the question just now. 
They say, hence, uh, for the, you want to find the number of solution for the equation x plus pi tangent to x equals to zero for zero until pi. Step the number of solutions. Okay, now we want to draw another graph on the same graph we draw here. So that's why I advise you because we want to draw the second graph here. So when you draw, when you draw your first graph, make sure you draw it properly. Use the ruler. You, okay, some people, they use freehand. They use freehand. They just simply label the angle. Okay? So that it causes some angle big. If some angle, the range is big. Some is small. The scale is not uniform. So if not uniform, it will cause problem not only to your sketching, but also to the second graph that you want to draw. So... I, when I talk this one, when I talk to my student, my the first question, the first question from my student is, uh, sir, uh, not this question is only sketch. Uh, this one everyone must understand. Sketch doesn't mean simply draw. Okay, sketch you still need a uniform scale. It it's just that you no need to draw draw on the graph paper. Okay, you no need to find all the points. But you still have to find minimum point and you still have to follow the uniform scale to make sure your graph is in the good shape. Okay, now let us try to do these questions. Just now, the equation of the graph for this tangent is y equals to 1 plus uh, tangent 2x. So now we want to find out the second graph from here. So what we do is first, uh, first, I will move this pi tangent to x uh, to the other side, maybe. Or maybe I move the x to the other side, I'll get pi tangent to x equals to negative x. So let after that, I, I check. I don't want the pi in front. So if I don't want the pi in front, both sides I divide by pi. Then I get tangent 2x is equals to negative x over pi. Next. You can see this tangent to x, and here also you have tangent to x, right? So we can substitute inside already if you want. So if you substitute inside, what you get is y equals to 1 uh, minus x over pi, right? Or we can write it as y is equals to negative x over pi plus 1. So once you manage to get this graph, you will get one mark, right? After that, it's a time for you to sketch so to sketch this one very simple you can just construct a simple table like this okay so this one is your x this one is your y so when x is um zero okay when x is zero then you can put the x inside here zero so zero plus one one so that is your first point okay after that when y is zero hey, sorry when x is zero, the y is one. That is your first point already. On it. Oh, I got type. Not necessarily to show the table. It's not a must. But the table can help you to understand more. So when the, then you put a point there, zero. So when x is pi, so usually we take from, we take the point from the starting and also the ending, pi. So put the pi inside the x here. So pi over pi, negative one. Negative one plus one, zero. So that will give us the second point, zero, right? Join. So once you manage to draw the graph, you will get one mark. That is your second mark. Then we count how many intersection points here. One, two, three. Then we write down number of solution is three. So that will give you your third mark. So usually in paper two, uh, the, question you, the question will ask in this way. They might start from the question of proving. Like I say, if proving you cannot do, you try to change the identity to get the one mark first. Then after that, they ask you to sketch. So the sketch always, remember, first mark is either tangent or sine or cos. Second mark, they check on your number of cycle. And then they check on your amplitude. And they check on your whether the graph is shifted up or shifted down. Okay, then the last part of the last part of the question always asks for the number of solutions. But of course, I'm what I'm talking here is the routine questions. We never know how the question change if kebab.
All right. But before we worry about KBAT, we make sure you can understand routine first. Okay, that's all for my sharing for the trigonometric function. So let us move to the next topic. Okay, next topic I would like to share with you is integrations. So integration also another topic that I think a lot of people, they do not like it. I get they do not like it, but I cannot deny also integration is one of the most important chapter. Definitely the question will be asked in both paper one and paper two. So you have to answer if you if you manage to answer, it will contribute a lot of marks in your uh to you to your final final result later on, final marks later on. Okay, let me show you some of the common question uh, that you uh, come out in SPM and some of the concept that you need to know. Okay, let us see. Diagram 8 shows the curve y equals to 8 over 3x minus 1 squared. And the straight line is the tangent to the curve at point 0.12. So usually if you look at this kind of question, so you need to know first, the tangent is a straight line. Tangent is a straight line, touch the curve at one point. So as the one draw in the question here. And you can see the coordinate 1, 2, and the curve is this. So some people, when they look at this curve, then they start to afraid already. But please, always write it as y equals to 8. You can bring the 3x minus 1 up. So if you bring up the 3x minus 1, then the power you write it as negative 2. Right? Find the equation of the straight line. So if you want to find the equation of the straight line, you see the word straight line, please think of y equals to mx plus c. Right? So y equals m plus c means you need to know what is the gradient and you need to know what is the y-intercept. So to find the gradient under the under calculus, you need to you need to differentiate the curve, right? Find the first derivative, it will give you the gradient function. So our first step, we differentiate it. So for those who cannot remember how to differentiate, uh, please you revise back a bit. Okay. So we find our dy dx here. First step, we bring down the negative 2, multiply with the add, you get negative 16. Okay, the 3x minus 1, we copy down, and the negative 2 minus 1, it becomes negative 3. So lastly, don't forget, we have to do the internal differentiation. So we, inter we differentiate 3x, you will get 3. Differentiate negative 1, no more, becomes 0, right? So that will give us dy dx equals to negative 16, 3x minus 1 to the power of, uh, sorry, it will give us negative 48 over 3x minus 1 to the power of 3. I bring down the 3x minus 1. So that's why you can see the power negative 3 become positive 3 back. Okay, so this is what we call gradient function. So to find the gradient of tangent, we substitute the value of 1 inside the x here. So this is what I did just now uh, here. So negative 48 over 3, put 1 in, minus 1 to the power of 3, you count it. Then with that, we get a gradient already. So once we get the gradient, then uh, negative 6 is a time for us to find the y-intercept. How to find the y-intercept? Very simple also. We are going to substitute the point 1 and 2 inside the equations. So 2 equals to negative 6 times 1 plus c. So that will give us our y-intercept, which is, which, which is 8. So here, give you 8. With that, our equation y is equals to negative 6x plus 8. So this question, for some people, they, feel they find it difficult. Why? Because uh, by right, is under the chapter of integration, but you need to apply the concept of differentiation inside. So my advice is, if you want to master this chapter, try to know also a bit the, con the, the, the concept from differentiation. At least you need to know how to differentiate it. Okay, so for the marking here, because you've got four marks, first mark is given once you manage to differentiate it. You differentiate, you get one mark. Second mark is given once you manage to find the gradient. Okay, find the gradient. The third mark is when you substitute the point in, in order to find the y-intercept. The last, lastly, the mark given to your final answer. All right. So this one consider very uh, straightforward. Lah. Actually, the marking here also the same for differentiation chapter. Differentiate always get one mark. Finding gradient, one mark. 
finding y-intercept one mark. Oh, I mean, same as coordinate geometry, finding gradient, finding y-intercept, and y equals to negative 6x, answer one mark. Okay, now let us have a look on question B. Question B, we want to find the area of shaded region. So some people, when they look at this, they might confuse. Like my student, I notice a lot of them, they will go to find the triangle. But actually, there's no use for us to find the triangle, right? Because you know, if you want to find the area, you don't need the whole triangle. Do you notice the area is here? This one, uh, this is the part that you should notice if you want to do. To find area, you can either integrate with respect to x or with respect to y, right? It depends on which one is easier for you. But for this question, I think with respect to x will be easier to find, huh? okay? So we now we want to integrate the x from the one until the three. Okay, but we need to know what is this value here, right? Okay, let us see this value to find it is the x intercept. So based on the equation just now, y is equal to negative six x plus eight. Okay, we substitute the zero inside. Zero is equal to negative six x plus eight. Is this the equation? Uh, let me see. Yeah. So we submitted the zero inside. So what we get is x is equals to four over three. Yeah, four over three. Four over three. So which means at this point you will get four over three. Okay, now so you need to you need to understand to get the shaded region, you got two shape head, two, two shape you have to consider. One is this kind of shape. Another one is the small triangle inside, if you notice. Okay, why I need to, we need to consider the small triangle? Because when you integrate it, when you integrate the curve from 1 to 2, the area, it will move downward until the axis. So which means you will not get the shaded region, you will get the whole thing, including the triangle. So that's why we have to minus the triangle. And to, to, to find the area of triangle, very easy we find the length one by one. This one is four over three, this one is one. So four over three minus one, you will get one over three. And then we know that the height of the triangle is two, right? Based on the B here. Okay, so that will give us the area of triangle. One over two times two times one over three, which is one over three. Okay, now it's a time for us to integrate. So we inter integrate this eight. So integrate, the eight over three x minus one. So I already changed it become three x minus one to the power of negative two, right? And the number of eight you want to put inside or you want to put outside is up to you lah, because we, the things we are, not, we are going to integrate is three x minus one. So I hope you still remember how to integrate these kind of equations. So what we do is first, uh, the eight we copy only. Okay, then after that, three x minus one, we copy down also. And the power negative two, you plus one, it becomes negative one. So this negative one, you bring down. And after that, the, the coefficient of the x three, you bring down as well. And then you close the bracket. And this range is from one until two. Okay, so this is what we do. Okay, and then after that, we just have to count. So we simplify the whole thing here first. So maybe this negative, Three, I can move it out, it becomes negative 8 over 3 outside. And inside, I still have uh, 1 over 3x minus 1 from 1 until 2, right? So this one is from 1 until 2. So we, ha we have to substitute the 2 inside first, then we substitute 1 inside, and then we minus. So this is what we get. We substitute the 2 inside, then we substitute the 1 inside. So in my calculate, what I type here, I did not put the negative 3 outside. But if you want to move up the negative 3, uh, they want up to you. Lah. Yang penting, you know which one to substitute first. 2 first. Then after that, 1. Make sure you minus them to find the difference. So that will give you the value 4 over 5. So with that, we get the area under the curve. This. So minus it. 4 over 5 
minus 1 over 3. Then we get our final answer, 7 over 15. So this whole question here, if you look at this SPM question, it gives you 6 marks, a lot. Of course, we do not know how is the mark, how is the mark given in KSSM, but KBSM, you look at these questions. 6 mark, how we supposed to give? First mark is given once you manage to find out the base of the triangle, which is 1 over 3. At the point, sorry, it's not the base of the triangle, it's the point R, which is 1 over 3. At 4 over 3, sorry. Then after that, finding the area of triangle, 1 mark, and then integrate, 1 mark, substitute, 1 mark, you use the area of the uh, area under the curve minus the triangle, 1 mark, and the answer, 1 mark, 6. So always remember, uh, usually this kind of question that require you to integrate, integrate always can give you one mark. Okay, I repeat, integrate always give you one mark. And then substitute always give you one mark. So don't skip the substitute. I know some people, they, they like to press calculator, then truth get the answer, then truth write down. But if you want to do that, I cannot stop you. But make sure you show which the substitution, you have to substitute the value in. All right. So one more question I want to share with you. So let us have a look. So this question came out in year uh, 2013 or 2014. I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I, I can't remember. But this question let it, um, at that time is still considered non-routine questions because it never asked in SPM before. So uh, as you can see, diagram, you, you don't see any Cartesian plan given. Right, no x axis, no y axis, and the diagram shows the diagram. This diagram shows part of the ball and not the, the front part of the ball, and the, it can be represented by the equation y is equal to ax squared. So, many students, when they look, they look at these questions, uh, the information given there, then they're being already. What, what is this? What we're supposed to understand? No, usually the question given in the Cartesian plan, you got the y, you got the axis. And the first question, show a is equal to one over 30. So to understand this question, then you must understand y equals to, y equals to a x squared. This gives you a quadratic graph, right? So quadratic graph, you got two kinds of shape. It can be smiley face, it can be set face. How to know? You look at the a, right? So if your A is positive, smiley face. If your A is negative, set face. So since this question is, uh, you can see the diagram given is smiley face, then you, you are very sure that this A definitely is a positive value. Of course, uh, we do not know what value is that. Uh, this is what the question want to ask. Uh, want to ask. You can see it's positive value, right? One over 30. And the second thing we want to know is, do you notice uh, there is no other value at the back? Because we know y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c should be the, the form of quadratic, quadratic function, right? C represent the y-intercept. So if there is no value at the back, it means that the y-intercept is zero, right? I repeat, the y-intercept is zero. Okay, one more thing we notice beside the c, the b also don't have. So if the b also don't have, what does it mean? If you have the value of b, it means that your curve will be slightly to the left or to the right of the y-axis. So if the other B means your graph will be at the center like this. So which means your y-axis at the center, like that is your axis of symmetry. And because the y-intercept is zero, then you know that your axis is somewhere here. Okay, so this is how we understand how this is how we understand now from the equation. But actually, if you just draw it, I think oh, a, a lot of you can get it also. It's just that I try to explain to you how we understand this. So now, until until here, then we should under we try to understand the value. You can you can have you can see the curve here, and you can see this part is thirty, right? And then this part is thirty. This part is negative 30. So that will give you a total length of 60 and the two point here with the coordinate 30, 30 and negative 30, 30. So now we can substitute one of the coordinate inside the equation. So we put in 
y equals to ax square, you put in 30 equals to a 30 square. So you count it. 30 divided by 30 square, you will get 30 over 900, which gives you 1 over 30. So with this, it is proven, right? So the question is only two marks. So you should be very clear. Uh, you should know already. First mark is the substitution. Second mark is the answer. Okay, now the important part is we need to know how to answer the second one, volume. So usually integration, you can see the pattern of the question is almost the same. First question they might, uh, especially in paper two, first question they might ask for a certain coordinate and so on. Second question, they might ask for uh, area of uh, certain area or shaded region and so on. Then third question, they might ask for the volume. So you know, if you know how to integrate, you know how to find the area, you know how to find the volume, integration shouldn't be a big problem for you already. So let us see. For this question, volume uh, needed to fill the bowl to the depth of 20 cm. So 20 cm means some way here. So that is the volume that you need to fill. So if you notice the, my drawing here, if you want to fill the volume, you need to make the things rotate in this direction, right? So this one, you can see it rotate left and right, left and right. So this one, we call it, it rotate about the Y axis. Okay, I repeat, it rotate about Y axis. So when it rotate about Y axis, this one, we have to integrate with respect to Y. So to find the volume, the subject, the subject inside must be x, and then we have to add pi, and then we add square, right? So you can see the value here. If you want to integrate this, you need to integrate from 0, go up to 20, right? So here, the range we write down from 0 until 20. So that is our first step. So here, I show you already. To find the x square, we move the 30 to the other side. Then we put in. Pi, integrate from 0 to 20, 30y dy. So integrate this 30y, it gives us uh, 30 pi, I put outside, and then y squared over 2 from 0 until 20. Show your substitution. Put the 20 in first, put the 0 minus. Then after that, you count for the answer. So the volume here is 600 pi. Okay, so this question is a 4 marks question. So always remember also, so this question, how you get the four marks. Integrate always got one mark. Substitute always got one mark. But for this one, the first step before you integrate is already given one mark. Why? Uh, usually normal questions, you, before you integrate, you don't get any marks. But this question they give you. Because this question, it doesn't tell you whether this you have to integrate with respect to x or y. You have to decide by your own. So that's why once you write it correctly, dy, 30y inside, they give you one mark. Second mark, you integrate correctly. Third mark, you substitute. And fourth mark is the final answer. Okay, so I hope I'm clear. I already went through with you how to find area, how to find volume. But of course, uh, my sharing here is only show you for this question only. So you, if you want better understanding, you have to do by your own again. Okay, for more questions. Okay, the next chapter I want to share with you is differentiations. So differentiations, uh, if you say this chapter is very difficult, um, it can say it can say it it is not it is not an easy chapter. Yes. Okay, it is not an easy chapter. So impossible for me to show you everything from this chapter also, but I would just want to share with you some important concept that you need to know to answer this this uh, the question from this chapter. So I will use the example from SVN. Okay, let us have a look on this. Okay, the a matter. You can see this one. Uh, I cannot read the question above. Okay, never mind. I will read the BN part. The sebuah pepejah logam dibentuk dengan menggabungkan sebuah kon. So use a kon and a cylinder with the with the the jari sepunya. Jumlah luas permukaan pepeja, the total surface area is given by A equals to 2 pi bracket 18 over R plus R square over 3. So these questions, the equation is already given. Okay, you no need to form the equation by your own, which is the easy part. Lah. And usually if I look at this kind of equation, 
I will advise my student to write it in this form first. A is equal to 2 pi. And then the 18 over R, you write it as 18 R to the power of negative 1 plus uh, this R square over 3. Maybe you can write it as 1 over 3 R square. Uh, up to you, lah, any of you. Yang penting, you are ready. You are ready the form. So you are ready in the indices form so that you can differentiate it. The solid expand when heated. It is given that the surface area of the solid change at the rate of 1.4 pi cm square per second. So if you see the terms that use here, surface area of the solid change at the rate of 1.4 pi cm square per second. What is this about? This one is rate of change. So you need to know how to identify the rate of change here. So you can see the units given cm square over time. So that is dA dt, area over time, correct? Area over time. And the rate is 1.4 pi. And you know, rate can be positive and can be negative, right? How to know whether it's positive or negative? This question said, expand when heated means the area is increasing. So you will know that this value is positive. So sometimes you have to read properly. If you notice eh, the things is decreasing, it might be negative. So the question will not tell you. So now find the rate of change or its radius in cm per second when the radius is 6 cm. Okay, so this information, radius 6 cm, we are going to use later on. So what we need to find here, rate of change of its radius, cm against time. You see the notice that, and the units that use here. So which means is the radius against the time. So radius, we label it as R. So D A, A D R over DT. So this is a thing that we need. Okay. So information given is D A D T and you want to find D R D T. So every time you look at the question of rate of change, please think of chain rule. Okay. How to play with the chain rule here. So I will, I, I will share with you here. We have three variables. One is the area one is the radius, one is the time, right? So we are going to play between these three. So maybe you can draw like this. Something equal to something times something. Okay, so we have three things here. One is dA, one is dr, one is dt. So what we want to find here, dr, dt, right? So maybe we can put the dr, dt in front. Okay, once you put a dr, dt in front, remember that this one is a chain. Change means something is connected between the first and the second, second value here. Okay, these two. Okay, and then after that, if you write down dr, then here, please, you write down dr. If you write down dt here, at the bottom here, you write down dt. The one that connected both of them is dA, dA. Okay, this is, this is one way for you to write down the chain rule. But maybe some of you, you don't want to write in this way. Maybe you said you want to put the DA, DT in front. Can or not? Of course can. Okay, let us have a look. So this part, uh, it must be the same. Let's say you want to put DA over DT in front. So automatically, you write down DA here and then DT at the bottom. And the one that connected both of this is DR, DR. And of course, if you want to put DA, DR in front, also can up to you, okay? As long as it fulfill the condition of the chain rule. So I just write down here, just in case some of you are wondering whether you can do that or not. Can, no problem, DADR. So DADR, it will be DA here. And then you write down DR here. The one connecting them is DT. Even though all of this can be applied, but of course you have to choose the one that you feel is easier for you, all right? Okay, now, dA dt we know already is 1.4 pi. So let's say we want to use the we want to use the first one. We want to use the first one or the second one. The first information we need to find here is dA dr because we don't know, right? How to find dA dr? Differentiate the equation of a in terms of r. Okay, we differentiate that one first. So we differentiate it. 
uh, after I write in this form, I expand it. So it becomes 36 pi r to the power of negative 1 plus 2 over 3 pi r squared. Now I differentiate. So again, for those who forgot already how to differentiate, uh, you listen here properly. So dA over dr, how I know it's dA dr? Because we are going to differentiate the r. Bring down the negative 1, multiply with the 36. The pi I copy down, and the r to the power of negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. Okay, plus the second part, bring down the 2, multiply, it becomes 4 over 3. And the pi copy down, the r squared minus 1 becomes 1. No need to write now. So with that, I get the dA dr. So that, after I get this, uh, it's a time for us to use the, con the information given here. Radius is 6. So we are going to substitute inside the r here and the r here. Okay, we put in. The r to the power of negative 2, you bring down, right? So become r squared. So put in and you count it, you will get 7 pi. Okay, so our dA dr is 7 pi. So first information we have already. Second information also we have. dA dt we know. dA dr we know. So we are going to put inside the chain rule here. So the chain rule I show here is dr dt. So dr dt equals to dr over dA times dA over dt. So if you want to use the first one, let's say you, if you want to use the first one, then you need to know how to substitute in. dA dt is 1.4 pi, right? So dr dA, you number the balik, uh, dA dr is 7 pi. So if you consider the balik, dA, d, uh, dr dA, please, you consider the balik, the number become 1 over 7 pi also. Okay, so just like what I type here, 1 over 7 pi times 1.4 pi. Then cancel off the pi, you will get your final answer, 0 0.2 cm per second. So this is one way for you to do, of course. So maybe some of you, you want to try the second one or the third one, can also. I will show you the second one. So for the second one, you just have to put the, form, uh, the information in. DA, DT, we know is 1.4 pi. dA dr, uh, we already found it, 7 pi. And dr dt is the one that we want to find, right? So move the 7 pi to the other side, then you will get 1.4 pi over 7 pi equals to dr dt. And the pi and pi cancel off. 1.4 divided by 7, I believe you will get the same answer, 0 0.2 cm per second. Do we need to stack the unit? So of course, it's not a must for you to stack. So if you are not confident to stack, no need, but the value must be correct. So for these questions, the first mark is given, I think you should know already, different, differentiate. Okay, differentiate, one mark. Okay, chain rule, one mark. Answer, one mark. So the mark is given by concept by concept. How you count it, how you simplify, usually we don't have marks, all right? Okay, so this one is rate of change. So now I want to show you the second question, the second question, which is also the common question in SPM. The first one is rate of change. The second one is find the approximate change. Approximate change. So this one is under approximations. So just now, rate of change, we apply the chain rule. Approximate change, we apply the concept of delta. So I write here, delta y over delta x is equals to dy dx. So we are going to apply this concept in approximate change. In the surface of, uh, in the surface of, uh, in the surface area of the solid. So approximate change in the surface area of the solid, we understand it as delta a, which is the small changes in area in terms of pi. So this question, you do not need to change the pi. No, no need to replace with 3.142, just write it in terms of pi. When the radius increase, increase from six to 6.2 cm. This one is your radius, right? So it increase with a very small value. This time we also, we call it as another small change. So small chain or approximate chain we label as delta. So this one we label as delta r, the changes in radius. 
So 6 to 6.02, it increased by 0 0.02 cm, right? So if you cannot see the increment here, you can use 6.02 minus 6. You will get positive 0 0.02 as your delta R. So if you look properly, you want to find delta A and you are given delta R. So this question, theta Y, theta X. Huh? So if you want to apply the concept, we apply this delta A over delta R is equals to dA over dR. So you look properly. D delta R, we know already. Delta A, we want to find, right? So now our task is to find out what is this dA, dR. Actually, based on the previous question, we already get our dA, dR, right? We already get our dA, dR, which is um, negative 36 pi r to the power of negative 2 plus 4 over 3 pi r. So I write down, I write it down here. dA over dR is equal to negative 36 pi r to the power of negative 2 plus 3 over 4 pi r, 3 over 4 pi r. Okay, so we need to find out the value of this dA dr. So we are going to take the first value here, the original value before it changed to 6.02. Okay, the original value of the radius, 6. So you put a 6 in, you put a 6 in. This one is actually the same as the one just now because just, just now also 6, right? So which means you don't have to count. If you put a 6 in, you will get 7 pi. So this question, you have to be careful a bit. For this question, it is the same value used in first and the second question, which is 60m. So if the question use different value, for example, 4 to 4.02 or 8 to 8.02, then we cannot refer to 7 pi already from the previous questions. You have to substitute inside. Okay, keep, uh, keep in mind, you always check first. If they are different, substitute inside to find the new value. All right, but for this question, they are the same. Nah? Okay, now what we do, we apply delta A over delta R is dA dr, put in one by one. Delta A we want to find. Delta R is 0 0.02 and dA dr is 7 pi. Put in and you will get your answer. 0 0.14 pi. That will give you our delta R, which is also approximate change in surface area. Okay, so this question is the simple one also. One mark is given once you find your delta R. So this delta R, you don't have to do any complicated working, right? That will already give you the first mark. Means you understand it. That is the small change in, in delta, uh, in radius. And second mark given to this concept. So it's either you it's either you substitute inside here or you apply the formula given in given in the textbook or the reference book is like this. Delta A is equals to delta dA over dr times delta R. Can also you substitute the value in, you still can get the value at uh, the marks for this K1. One mark for your final answer, 0 0.14. Pi. No need to change because the equation asks for in terms of pi. Okay. So these two questions usually ask in SPM chain rule, approximation, and no, I mean rate of change and approximation. Make sure you know it's not that difficult for you to understand. Okay. So now I want to show you the third question, which is also uh, famous in SPM. So let us have a look. If a solid of a same shape is to be formed in such that the total surface area is minimum. Okay, this kind, this keyword, if you if you if you notice, the question always like to ask maximum, minimum. The question said total surface area is minimum. Find the minimum total surface area of the solid in terms of pi. Again, we don't change the value of pi. But of course, the import, important information here is what is the concept we're supposed to apply for total surface area is minimum. So that will need require the concept that we learn under the concept of turning point, which is the minimum point or maximum point. dy dx equals to zero. Do you still remember at the turning point of the graph, either maximum or minimum point, 
the gradient function will be equal to zero. But of course, this question, we are not talking about the gradient function, but we know that uh, at turning point, first derivative is equal to zero. Same thing also, when the total surface area is minimum, then we know that the first derivative, first derivative of the area is also equals to zero. What is the first derivative of area? It is actually dA over d something. I also don't know like, what is the d something, but if you look at the equation here, because it's a in terms of a in equals to something in terms of r, then we know is dA over dr. So this is the concept we are going to apply. Okay, same as previous question, dA dr is negative 36 pi over r squared plus 4 over 3 pi r. Let it equal to zero. So equals first derivative equals to zero. That is the concept of minimum or maximum. So next time you read the question properly, if area, first derivative of area equals to zero. If volume, First, if volume is minimum or maximum, first derivative of volume is equal to zero. Okay, it depends on what is the information given. Okay, so once you write down this, then it's a time for us to simplify the whole thing to find what is the R here. Okay, I multiply, I multiply both sides with R squared. So here I multiply with R squared, then I get negative 36 pi plus 4 over 3 pi R cubed equals to zero. Then I move the negative 36 to the other side and then I count it. 4 over 3 pi r cubed equals to positive 36 pi. Cancel, cancel off. You count, you will get your r, which is 3. So this is the radius which will give you tot the minimum total surface area. So to find the minimum total surface area, so we are going to substitute this radius into the equation of area inside here okay put in put a three in count it you will get your answer 18 pi so from here we know that this 18 pi is our minimum total surface area okay so this question gives you four marks so how are we supposed to give the four marks here of course first mark is given when you apply the concept of da dr equals to zero that is a concept of the uh, minimum and maximum value, okay? So the second mark is given once you manage to find your R, that is the radius that will give you the minimum total surface area. Third mark is given once you substitute. So remember, substitute certain value inside formula or inside certain concept always give you one mark. So one more mark, your answers. Okay, so basically I can see usually these three concepts always ask in SPM, rate of change, approximations and maximum minimum of course maximum minimum this one also related to the turning point uh. and we still have a lot again we need to know uh, tangent normal and so on so please if you want to master more on this topic please go and do more practice on that so here i only show you some of the common concept you need to know you need to know okay uh, so that's all for differentiations so now i would like to share with you again the next topic is circular measure. So if you look back to my planning for my student, circular measure is one of the topic that I list down in phase one. So which means I need those who still fail master this topic. Why? Because this topic is not only important in ADMATS and also in normal mathematics. Normal mathematics also, it will ask about the question from the circle. Is this that at maths, you got the new unit, radian and you got a new formula but whether you want to use it is up to you okay let me show you uh, one simple example not not uh, one example okay this diagram shows a, a semicircle pts with the center o and the radius is eight so the question tell you radius eight qsr is the sector of the of a circle with the center of A. So this question, you can see you've got two sectors here. One is the sector at the center O, another sector at center S. So this one, the radius is eight, the question tell already. So which means this also eight, 
and from O to T also, from O to T is also M. Okay, so this is how we understand the information. Next, and the question also telling you, this is also another sector, right? You notice the sector is at center S. So you must be very clear which sector at which center. And also the information state because of uh, midpoint OP, okay, R is the midpoint of OP. So we can divide it into four and four, right? So now let us see. This one is the diagram given. So the first question, find the angle of TOR in radian. So TOR is here. So this is the data we want to find. And we know, we know already R is at the midpoint, right? So we can label it as four, this one four. And you know, do you notice this one is a right angle triangle? So right angle triangle, we can always apply any concept you, uh, the concept that you learn in form three, which is the trigonometry ratio, or we call it tua so cha. I don't know whether you are familiar with this term, tua so cha, tangent, sine, and cos. Now we know the four, we know the add, right? So four is adjacent, add is hypotenuse, so it's a over h, which is cos. So cos theta is equal to o, 4 over 8. Uh, okay, we can find the height also if you want. So cos theta is equal to 4 over 8. So theta is equal to 60 degrees. So you can see I just applying the normal concept only, right? And I get the answer in degree also. But because the question 1 in radian, so make sure you convert it back to radian. Okay, how to convert? Divided by 180 times 3.142 equals to 1.0473. So this answer, I give more decimal places, but remember the one I said just now, at least four significant figures. So one, two, three, four. So it is enough, good enough for you to write it as 1.0473. This one is okay. But if you round off become 1.05, this one is totally wrong. So starting from here until ending, if you are using this value, all would be wrong. Okay, so remember at least four significant figures. And one more thing I want to remind all of you, uh, the pi, because this one, this one is actually the pi. What value is supposed to be used for pi? Firstly, I want to tell you, pi equals to 22 over seven, please don't use, unless the question asks you to use. Otherwise, never think of this value in at max. So secondly, pi in calculator can use or not. By right, the pi in calculator is more accurate than 3.142, but it depends on the question also. You have to, you have to check because most, most of the question, they will, they will have this one, the state. Use pi equals 3.142. So if they state there, please use 3.142, okay? Avoid using the one in calculator. You might get different answer. Sometimes the question might be not stating. If they not state the value, maybe it's okay for you to use. But if they stat already, please use triple one for two. Okay, so this question one mark for you to apply the cos theta equals to four over eight. One mark is for your answer. I repeat, the answer must be at least four significant figures. If three wrong, all right. Next, we know the angle already one point zero four seven or one point zero four seven three or sixty degree, and now the question said find the length in cm of the arc tq so arc tq we want to find uh, here the student might make the second mistake already some people they will thought this arc the center is at o then they thought the r the radius is eight then from there everything is wrong then you have to be careful arc tq the center is at s so if the center at s then you need to know what is the angle here right so actually very easy to find. This angle is 60 degree, right? So which means the other side here, it will be 180 minus 60, which is 120 degree, right? And then this angle here and this angle here, they are the same. So you can use 180 minus 120, which is 60. 60 divided by two, then you will get 30. 
I think some people might be noticed, noticed already, the angle is actually half of the angle at the center. Uh, this is the one that you learn in lower form also. The angle at the center of the circle is always double the angle at the circumference, right? 60, 30. But of course, if you are not sure, you can count it in the proper way. Lah. If you don't want to use the degree, you can use the radian because radian for 180 is 3.142, right? So 3.142 minus 1.0473. 3.142 minus 1.0473, you will get 2.0947 uh, if you want to do that. Or if you want to directly divide it by 2 also can, you will get 0 0.5235265, up to you lah, which one you prefer. So yang penting, apply the formula. Okay, find the angle first, then you apply the formula. So if you want to use the Edmax formula, okay, if you want to use the Edmax formula, can also, no problem, you can use it. Okay. I'm not sure I type anything wrong here. Oh, okay, nothing, nothing wrong, sorry. So you want to use the MS formula also can, you want to use the max formula also can, but you need to find out what is the radius. The radius of the sector here is the one in the blue color, right? So this one, I draw different color here just to show you this one is the right angle triangle. To find the radius, we can apply Pythagoras theorem. So TS square is equal to square root of 48 square plus 12 square. So with that, we will get TS, which is square root 192. So usually before I reach my final answer, I will, I will leave it in this form. Okay, then after that, I will apply the formula. So you either use the formula from the AdMath or you use the formula, uh, you use the method of uh, maths. So if AdMath, you use S equals to R theta. So the R is square root 192. And the theta, make sure you write it in radian, 0 0.25237. Uh, this one, I want to emphasize a little bit. For, for the formula, arc length is S equals to R theta. So the second formula here is to find area, which is 1 over 2 R square theta. So these two are the new formula that you learn in AdMath with the condition of the theta must be in radian, not in degree. Okay, please remember that in radian, not in degree. And both of these formula are not given in SPM. So that's why you need to memorize it. So if you cannot memorize it, make sure that you know how to count using the normal mathematics method. Like for example, this question, you want to find the arc length. You just have, you know that the angle is 30, right? So just write down 30 over 360 times 2 pi r. The pi is 3.142, of course, and the r here is square root of 192. So you try to count. The final outcome might be slightly different, but it's okay as long as your method is correct. Okay, so based on the calculate, my calculator here, I get 7.256. Okay, 256. And the one I get here is 7.257. So the difference of plus minus one, that should be okay. This, this one, because I use different method. This one, I use radian. Radian, I already round off the value. So it will be slightly different a bit. Okay. All right. So some people, maybe they do not want to use the normal mathematics method. They want to, and they want to use the normal mathematics method. But they don't, they, they, let's say la, they do not know what is 0 0.5237 actually. Just let's say, la, let's say. They do not know. Actually, it's 30 degree, but they do not know. And they do not know the formula. Then how they're supposed to do it? I tell you, you can always use the mathematics method also like this. Times 2 pi r. Same method also. It's just that now. Uh, because you don't know that one is 30 degree, right? So that's why we write down 0 0.5237. But keep in mind, this one is in radian. This one is in degree. 
So if degree is 30 divided by 360 degree, if radian 360 degree, it will give you two pi, right? So you have to follow. If you want to use radian, then you use radian over two pi. If degree, then you use degree 360. And two pi over two pi, it can cancel off. So this one, it will give you 0 0.5237 multiplied with square root 192. Actually, it gives you this, right? So you can see this formula is derived from here, all right? So you've got many methods for you to do circular measure chapter. It's not necessary. Must use that formula. It's very flexible. Depends on how you understand it. Okay, now, I hope this is clear. And the marking here, one mark given to the angle. Once you identify the angle 30 or the pi over 6 or 0 0.5237, one mark. You use the Pythagorean theorem to find the TS, one mark. Uh, use the formula to find the arc length, one mark. And the answer, one mark. Okay, next. C, you need to find the area of the shaded region. So for circular measure chapter, the question always the same. You can, if you notice, first question always ask for angle. Second question always ask for maybe length or perimeter. Third question, they always ask for area. In this case, is the area of shaded region. So you can see area of shaded region is inside the sector. It's inside this sector, right? So which means if you manage to find the area of this sector, then you minus the triangle inside. Can you see th there is a triangle inside? You minus that triangle, then you will get the area of the shaded region. So that's why now our task is to find the area of sector. So we can use the formula. 1 over 2 r square theta. Here, I use the formula of 1 over 2 r square theta. So r is square root 192. Theta is 0 0.5237. And then I get the value of 50.275 something. So again, if you, if, you, if you don't know how to use the formula, you can always refer to mathematics method, which is 30 over 360 degree times, okay, this time is not 2 pi r, it's pi r squared. So the r here is square root of 192. And then you can press calculator. You should all get almost the same answer. Okay, so based on my calculator here, I get the answer 50.27, 50 50.272. 50.272. Oh, got a little bit different. No? If you round off, can, one is 50.27, another one is 50.28. But still okay. The last value, the difference is only plus minus one. Okay. So now, if you want to use the method, uh, if you don't know the formula, like I say the formula is not given, you forgot, and you don't know this 0 0.5237 is 30 degree, what can you do? You can do like what I did just now. Use the same method pi times r square, okay? And then you put the angle here, 0 0.5237. Since the in front here is radian, so we cast it over 2 pi in radian also, okay? So we can simplify it. Simplify the simplify it, cancel off the pi and the pi. So this one, it will give you 1 over 2 times with 0 0.5237. 5237 and then you times with square root of 192 square, right? So do you notice this? Same as this method. So again, we we have uh we have suddenly we have derived the formula of 1 over 2 r square theta. So it's not a must for you to memorize the formula, it's from the mathematics method. It's just that we are referring to the radian the angle in radian, right? Now, now it's the time for us to find this triangle. So after you find the triangle, we minus it, then you will get the shaded region. So triangle shouldn't be a problem. One over two times base times height. And then after that, we minus. So 50.275 minus 51.569. Then you get the answer, 8.706. Again, always follow the rules of one, two, three, four significant figures. That is the safest way for you to leave your final answers. So that's why 
usually if me, before I reach my final answer, I will make sure I will give slightly longer value during the working and final answer, baru I round off. So one mark for you to find the area of sector, one mark for you to find the area of triangle, one mark for you to minus it, use sector minus triangle to find the area of shaded region and one mark for the final answer. So basically, this is about the circular major chapter. And I want to emphasize again, circular major chapter, sometimes you need to apply the concept of triangle inside. So the concept you can, you can consider here is, for example, the tangent sign cos like the one I apply. You can apply Pythagoras theorem sometimes, especially when you've got a right angle triangle inside. Sometimes maybe you can apply also the sine rule, cosine rule. I do not know. Sometimes the question might require that, but most of the time it doesn't. Right. As I can go triangle, you can think of any concept that you learn in triangle chapter. Okay. And remember the chapter always asks in this form the length, the area, length, area. Users have to know how to apply it. Don't know the formula? No problem. Always stick to the mathematics method. Don't know the angle in degree? No problem. You can always stick to the mathematics method also. Just make sure it's over 2 pi in front. All right. So now it's uh, 4.45 already. So let me share with you one of the last chapter for today. So uh, again, we cannot go, I cannot, I cannot go through every chapter with you because we have 18 chapter. So I only go through the chapter that I feel that is important for you to know and is easier. Uh, easier for you to uh, score. So the first, the eBoost part one, I already share with you some uh, easy topic. So part two, I share with you some more uh, difficult topic, but I show you also how you're supposed to score, how you're supposed to answer, and how you which, which part you can get the marks. So I, I do believe when with the practice, you should able to uh, you should able to perform well in exam later on. Okay, let us have a look on the last topic that I want to share with you, which is progressions. Progression maybe is uh, can consider one of the uh, the topic with pari banyak formula that you need to know. Of course, if you don't if you don't talk about the identity, uh, many formula, okay, TN formula, SN formula, and then you got arithmetic and you got geometric again. So. Uh, I will go through the, some example for you and then let us see how we're supposed to answer and how we're supposed to get marked and how we're supposed to do also if you have no idea how to do formula. Look at these questions. You are given uh, the, sum, the sum of the first n term for the geometric progression, Sn equals to 5 over 2, 3 to the power of n minus 1. So you want to find the first term, you want to find the common ratio. So this question is actually easy because you know that uh, first term, you just have to put a one in, right? Put a one in because we know T1 is equal to S1. The so sum of the first first term, of course, are same as the first term because you don't have the second term, right? Even though you want to plus, you cannot. It's still the first term. So put a one in, so you get five over two, three to the power of one minus one equals to five. That is your answer. Very simple question and one mark, right? So now let us see how we're supposed to find common ratio. So you have different method to find common ratio here. I can, show, I can show you. One of the method here is we can find the second term. Then after that, we use the second term divided by the first term. Then you get our common ratio, right? So common ratio formula is R is equal to T2 over T1 or T3 over T2 and so on. Right? So that's why I say, if we manage to find a second term, then we should be able to find a common ratio. But how to find a second term? We substitute the 2 inside. We find the S2. Okay, We put a 2 in. 5 over 2, 3 to the power of 2 minus 1 is equal to 20. But keep in mind, T1 is equal to S1, but T2, it doesn't equal to uh, S2. Why? Because we know S2 is equal to T1 plus T2, correct? So if you want to find T2, you need to move the T1 to the other side. It becomes S2 minus T1. Uh, that will give you T2. And S1 is, T1 is actually S1, right? So this is where the formula comes from. T2 is equals to S2 minus S1. 
But of course, even though you don't know the formula, no problem. As, as long as you understand this concept, T1 plus T2 is S2, then you should able to find your T2. So now we are going to use S2 minus T1. 20 minus 5, then you get your T2 already, which is 15, right? So to find the common ratio, divide. 15 divided by 5, it equals to 3. One mark for the answer, one mark for the working, one mark for the answer, right? So this is one way for you to do it. So some people, they prefer to use the formula. Uh, that one is up to them. Lah. So formula means this one. So if you don't know the formula, because this one is not given, you can always base on the concept. This one is concept. T1 plus T2 is S2, but it's, these two, they are actually the same, right? Okay, this, so this is one kind of question that they might ask in SPN. So now let me show you another kind of questions. Uh, this is another kind of question. This just now they show you the for, they give you the formula, uh, which is not the form, not the general formula. So now, uh, this one is an arithmetic progression, and you are given that the common difference is negative five. So the question talk about common difference. So AP lah, So you need to know the formula for AP. Given the sum of the first ten terms is forty five. So sum of the first 10 term, we understand it as S10, correct? S10. So now you want to find the first term and you want to find the 10 term. So this one also, uh, this one also not that difficult. We just need to know the formula. So we TN formula for a, AP is A plus N minus one D. So if you want to find SN, the formula is N over two, two A, plus n minus 1d. So actually, you got another formula for sn under ap, but that formula is not given in SPN. n over 2, a plus l. l here stands for the last term. So if you know the last term here, so in this case, the last term, if you are talking about 10 term, then the last term is t10. It depends on what, uh, which one you want to refer. Okay. So maybe the third, third formula is not, is, is not, it cannot be used like here. So we don't know. Let us have a look. Maybe can, maybe cannot. So to find the first term, to find the first term, we can refer to the information, right? Because the question said, sum of the first 10 term is 45. And the diff common difference is negative 5. So if you want to refer to formula, then we refer to 10 over 2, 2a plus 9d. Right, and then we know that the d is negative five. Okay, d is negative five. Put in, and then you just have to count it, simplify everything, and I believe that you're supposed to get the answer of a is equals to twenty seven. Okay, a is equals to twenty seven. But this question we are using formula. But do you notice that this question is not a must for you to use formula, right? Because, uh. Sometimes the people, they might confuse how they're supposed to do this question and they look at the formula, they throw the phobia, so that will, what is this? So if you are the type that you, you can easily get confused with the formula, then you can do listing method. Okay, listing method, I usually encourage my students to use in a progression chapter, especially the week one, because they can understand better. Okay, how? How to understand this? Let me show you. So listing method here, we start from the first term. Lah. So first term is A, right? We do not know. A, A. So the second term is A uh, minus 5, correct? Because every time decrease by 5, the third term is A minus 10. Fourth term is A minus 15. Fifth term is A minus 20. And then continue a minus 25, a minus 30, a minus 35, a minus 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One more is a minus 45. Right? So this, these are the 10 terms. And we know that the sum of the first 10 terms is 45. So what we do, we plus them. Now, of course, in exam, you don't do that. Nah. I, I mean, you don't, you don't arrange like what I did. I just want to explain to you. So how many A here? A, 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 10A. 10A, right? Then 
then we try to sum up all the value here. So which is um, 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35 plus 40 plus 45. So we get 225. So I write down here minus 225. And it will be equal to 45. And do you notice that even though you, you did not apply the formula of SN, you are actually getting this, right? So it's up to you. Some people, they prefer formula. Some people, they phobia with formula. So if you, if you really cannot with formula, think about this thing, okay? Some people, they can understand better with this thing. Okay, let us look at B, 10 term. So 10 term, if we talk about 10 term, this one is actually our 10 term. Lah, kan? So if we, if we do the listing, you know already, the 10 term is A minus 45. You just have to put the 27 inside, 27 minus 45, then you get the answer. But of course, if you want to use the formula, also can. T10 is equal to A plus N minus 1 D. Just count it properly, then you will get the answer, negative 18. But of course, if you already get it here, then you can just write down Tn is equal to 27 minus 45, which is also negative 18. So it's up to you. Lah. Working one mark, answer one mark. Working one mark, answer one mark. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So we still have four minutes left. So I will, ex I will discuss one more question with all of you, then we will stop. So one more question. Uh, this one is a listing actually. Oh, I just realized I got write down for you. So second question also you can do listing if you if you want. You list from 27, 22, 17, 12, 7, 2, negative, negative 8, negative 13, negative 18. You list down completely. So every time listing method, you have to list down completely. Don't use dot dot dot. All right. Okay, this question is a very long question. So I think maybe we can stop here because our time is not enough already. So today I have two hours, 30 minutes. I have went through a few topics with you. Um, we start with the trigonometric function chapter and that one I spent a long time to explain identity, how to use in the question of solving, finding, proving, and how to stitch and how to find a number of solutions. And then after that, we learn about the next chapter of uh, integrations differentiations, progressions. So like I said, the time is, even though it's two hours, 30 minutes, but it's still very limited for us to cover everything. But most importantly, I believe I have shared my strategy for my student. So I hope that will help you to give you some idea how you're supposed to do within this uh, five weeks. So five weeks some for, for, the, for those who still uh, doesn't perform well in your school exam, Always remember that school exam is only a tool to help you to detect, to identify, and to monitor your progress. Because everything we do in school is to prepare yourself for SPM. So don't feel too bad if you fail. Always remember, if you fail now, if you fail in the school exam, that result only shows that you need to put some, you need more effort for your SPM. That result also just to show you that where which part is your which part is your weakness uh, that part you to, you need to tackle before you face SPM okay and then school exam please you 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 see that one as the stepping stone on the journey to SPM so when you fall down now when you when you when you fall down you fail don't 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 give up okay in Chinese we got a word it means failure is the mother of success. So if you fail now, it doesn't mean you will always fail until the end, right? You fail now, it's just a signal for you to know, uh, to tell yourself what you're supposed to do. So I always believe with the well prepared, with the well planned, and with, with the well strategy, it should not be a problem for you to get what you want to get in SPM. So please, we work together to, we work together uh, to make yourself proud of your result later on, make your parents proud and make the school proud of you. Okay, so that's all from me. And lastly, all the best in SPM.
So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very, very much. Thank you to Dr. Mao. Wow. Two hours non-stop talking. I think uh, Dr. Ma, he has that very strong passion in this additional mathematics. That's why um, he, he is Dr. Ma, okay? A professor from uh, uh, additional mathematics. He has shared with you, he tried his best, okay? Using this um, limited, I, we should say it's limited hours, he, he is trying, I can see that he is trying to use this, uh, fully utilize these two hours, even he has prepared two hours, 30 minutes of material. He hopes that he can um, deliver 100% of his um, strategy, his um, recipe, okay? Just like our patisserie course, okay? Our, uh, teachers, our trainers here, they want, they have this strong passion. So they want to deliver 100% uh, strategy to the students and hoping that the students who are going to take up the exam soon, um, they can do well, right? They can master well, they can um, find the click, find the spark from, um, in I mean, from, the additional maths so that they can do well. Thank you very much, Dr. Ma. Do you want to drink water now? Because I didn't see you drink, uh, you drink water. You can drink water now. Hey, all right. Okay. I don't want later after the ebooks, you say, oh, I'm uh my my sotra is a bit dry <laughs> because of the ebooks. Because definitely we would like to invite you again uh to to conduct ebooks number three okay we are going to have our number three ebooks part three okay for our 2022 um spm students okay your um sharing session is very very wonderful okay all right thank you all right next we will open the floor for the Q&A session. This is our, uh, our plan, okay? But uh, I think due to time constraint, uh, you just join our uh, Telegram group chat, okay? Uh, because we do not want to waste a lot of time here in the air, right? Uh, because of the data usage or so, right? And I think it's almost uh, if, um, even, I mean, dinner time, okay? Right? So uh, I also hope that um, like, give Dr. Ma a little bit of time. Uh, I mean, he, he has to uh, rest a bit already. Okay, uh, very impressive uh, sharing just now. Okay, so Pada, uh, Para Hadirin, okay. How to join our group chat? Okay, yeah, there's one question pop up here um, in my WhatsApp, right? How to join the Telegram group chat? You can go to our chat box there. Okay, there is one link, you just click on that link and you join the Telegram group chat. Okay, so we have our, our expert teachers, okay, they are also in the group chat. So if you have any questions um, these few days, right, you just pause it up there, okay, and then uh, there's someone uh, can help you, right? Okay, um, yeah, we move on to the next one, okay. Farah Hadirin, Pehat SPM Ibus, Amat Berbesa Hati, Dapat Berkerja Sama Lagi Dengan Dr. Ma Chinang Yang Berada Di Kota Kinabalu, Okay, Untuk Sesi Kali Ini. Dr. Ma Chinang, On Behalf Of SPM Ibus, Okay, Yang Kedua, We Would Like To Express Our Greatest Gratitude In Making The Ibus SPM Revision Workshop, Right? Uh, a success one. We truly appreciate for all your sharings during the session um, this afternoon. Okay, as a token of appreciation, we would like to present you with the certificate of appreciation from PPD Miri and Realm Institute of Technology. May this be enough to show you how grateful we are that we are able to slot us to that you are able to slot us in your busy schedule, okay? Right, students. We will uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ma. Okay, we will 
send this uh, courier this certificate, this lovely certificate to your uh, school again. All right. Okay. Right. Dear attendees, uh, join me to celebrate this wonderful session by clicking the applause icon or thumbs up icon. Okay. Let's show our um, heart or our thumbs up to Dr. Ma. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let, thank you, the Dr. Ma. Right. Before we end our event for today, I would like to invite all the guests for um, the attendance. Okay. You, you have to uh, no group photo because a lot of us here, right? Okay. So you, you scan the attendance code here for the certificate, right? Um, and also the lucky draw session. Okay. So from this um, e certificate, the, the name that we uh, obtain, okay, then we will put it in the wheels of names, all right, for the lucky draw session. Okay, thank you for your cooperation. Quickly scan it, okay. Um, you have stayed with us this whole afternoon, all right, so you are deserved for this e certificate, right? Let's give about one minute, two minutes, all right, to scan it. Or if you can't scan it because you are using handphone to watch this whole lesson, okay, you can go to our chat box there, right? There's one link there. Click there, and then you can start to fill in um, simple um, question, all right? You just fill in simple, just give us a simple particular, okay? Then you will be awarded. Um, E certificate, right? And also deserve a chance, okay, to win lucky draw, okay? Already? One, two, three. Okay, now I would like to pass the, the screen. To, for my uh, colleagues over there, right? To show you how we conduct this uh, lucky draw session. Okay, don't go first, okay? Okay, um, what is the lucky draw gifts, okay? That we, we would like to um, give, give away, all right, to you, right? is we're gonna have um we have two voucher okay that we want to um present it to you to the lucky winner right one is the study voucher worth uh, 200 ringgit okay another one is a hot cross bun voucher worth 20 ringgit okay right so um for those of you if you are out i mean you are not staying in miri okay um, because the hot cross bun shop, I think it's only available in Miri. So probably you can, if you are the one who um, won this, probably you can contact your friends or contact your relative and ask them to come. Okay, you, they can help you to collect on behalf. All right, please move this window away. Mm, okay, I think no problem, right? Okay, so... Without further ado, uh, let me, uh, on my count, okay, three, we have three draws here, all right? So on my count, um, three, two, one. See who is the lucky winner? Okay, the first winner goes to even or Evan, okay, Baxter among Lucy. Could you please identify yourself? Is Evan still with us? If not, we are going to draw it again. Hello. Evan Baxter, among Lucy, are you still with us? Okay. 
If I shine, maybe you can tap at the chat box there. Okay. It said, I am here. I'm here. Auntie Lina, I am here. Hello, everyone. One, two, three. Okay, never mind. We draw again. Because we really want to give to those who stay with us until the end. Oh, Roseanne, Lao Yi, Jun, or Hun. Okay, Jun. Roseanne, Lao Yi, Jun. Are you here with us, Roseanne? Or probably you are with us in the YouTube. I mean, you are at the YouTube that side. Hello, Roseanne. Let me check out whether you are at the YouTube site or not. Roseanne, are you here with us? Roseanne, yeah, if you are it, uh, stay with us at the YouTube platform there, okay? Probably you can just type, I'm here at the live chat there. Roseanne? Okay, never mind. We draw again. The lucky winner goes to Isabel Grace Polly. Isabel, congratulations. Hi, finally. Hi, Isabel. Are you Isabel? Yeah, Isabel. Congratulations to you, okay? Kindly contact us, all right? Um, we will arrange the voucher delivery or to you, okay? Right? Congratulations, Isabel. Finally, we have someone here, right? Okay, next. We have two draw again, okay? We still have two more, okay? Before we go. Who is the lucky one? Beverly Edward. Hey, Beverly Edward, are you here with us? Beverly calling once. Hello, Beverly Edward. You are the lucky winner. Congratulations to Beverly calling twice. Beverly. All right. Okay. Calling third time. Beverly. Hello. Okay. Never mind. Let's draw again. Probably she, he let go. Okay. He gave the let go this uh, opportunity. Okay. This opportunity to the others. All right. Okay. Karen Jen Kong. Is Karen Jane Kong here with us? Oh my God. <laughs> Are you Karen? Hey, don't, oh my God. Who knows? Yeah, you are the lucky winner. I told you. All right. Okay, congratulations, Karen. Okay, so yeah. So kindly contact us. I will leave my contact number or my team will leave the contact number to you. Hey, poor vendor, why you laugh at her? <laughs> okay, last draw of the day. Last draw of the day. I think next time we, we should uh, let our speaker, okay, our pancharama to draw. Okay, <laughs> right? Okay, congratulations to Wong Mi Lin. Hi, you are the lucky one. Oh, very fast. Yes, Wong Mi Ling, congratulations. All right, you have won the study voucher, 200 ringgit, and the hot cross bun voucher, 20 ringgit. Okay, yeah, 
you can contact us. Okay, this is our number, right? This is our number. Kindly contact us, then we will arrange um, further. Okay. Congratulations to Wong Miling, Karen, and Isabel. Thank you for uh, thank you everyone. All right. If you didn't um, I mean didn't manage to get it, all right? Don't be disappointed. We still have um, another, we have a few more sessions with you all, right? Uh, they, the, the nearest one that will be tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow we will have this um, session, Chinese, Chinese language session, all right? I think this is the first um, the session uh, that uh, we conduct, right? For the Chinese one, okay? So, uh, okay, tomorrow uh, at 1.30, not 2.30, yeah? 1.30, join us back, right? And you still have this uh, lucky draw session. And uh, on the Monday, right? Most of you, I think you are science students, okay? You are science stream students. Don't miss it, all right? On Monday afternoon at 2.30, okay, same time as today, uh, we have this um, chemistry session with Chek Gu, Francisca Law uh, from SMK Methodist, Cebu, okay? Also a very, very um, experienced subject teacher, all right? And the final one will be on Tuesday, okay? Chegu Bibiana To from SMK Deshaun, right? So, Lona, okay. So, thank you very much for staying with us until this hour. And once again, thank you everyone for gracing our ceremony, our class, this revision classroom with your presence, okay? We truly appreciate it. On behalf of the organizing communities, I would like to apologize if we have done my mistake throughout the event. Okay, right? And gentle reminder, okay, don't forget tomorrow, all right? Mingtian hai yu hua yu ya, sang hua yu de. Okay, you know, why you don't share some mates who eat her nan her nan. Okay, we are part. Ming Tian can quite tell me the pun you eat chicken line. Right? So I would like to end my duty as a moderator for today's session. Right? And thank you, Dr. Ma. Tai Tian, Sissy, Dr. Ma, and Sissy Lao Su, how you see Sissy Shesson. Okay, a woman, Ming Tian, Tai Tian. All the best to you all. Hi, my name is Rona Tan, and I'm here to give the SPM students some motivational, right? So you are so close to your first stepping stone. Don't give up, but instead, give your very best to earn the victory. And on top of that, stay healthy, and may you fly high in life and achieve success in everything. Good luck. <laughs>